Hi everyone, this is part of my Olympus Fine Print series where I talk about potentially confusing settings in the camera. Today I'll be talking about metering, or how your camera measures light to calculate exposure, but more specifically I'm going to be talking about spot metering, spot metering high, and spot metering shadow. And then I'm also going to show you how you can tie the spot meter together to your focus point, which is very handy. As well as I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use the histogram in the live view or the viewfinder to understand the exposure that your camera is seeing. So I'll be using the M5 Mark II as my base camera, and I've done a full factory reset, and I put the camera into aperture priority. Now these settings will apply across all the Olympus cameras, but I'll make some uh, notes about some differences if they exist. However, uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's start by looking at the different metering modes available to us in the camera. And I'll just click the OK button to go into the Super Control Panel. And uh, I'm highlighting right now the metering mode. And you can tell because right up here in the top it says metering. Let me click OK. And I'll click OK again. And it'll tell me what metering this is. This is ESP where it measures everything in the frame to calculate the exposure. So it just kind of averages everything out. Uh, but it also supposedly does some sort of intelligence where it tries to see highlights and shadows and, and keep everything in place. But so it's not really a, a straight up average of everything in the scene. And the next one here is center weighted metering. And center weighted metering doesn't apply any kind of intelligence or programming to the metering. Basically it just focuses on the center and then gradually a little bit outside of the center as well. And you can tell when you're in uh, center-weighted metering because you'll see two semi-half circles here in the frame, one here and one here. Hopefully you can see that. It's very, very faint. It's right there, just like that. All right, and then spot metering, which is what I'm going to focus on today, is... It covers only the center 2% of the frame. And you can tell because there's now a circle here uh, right in the middle of the frame. And that's where it's going to be metering. And you can tell because as I move this around, so if I have the circle here on the darkest area, you'll notice that the exposure is brightening to try to bring the uh, center of the circle to middle gray. And then if I go into the highlights here, like the silver part of the pen F, you can see it's uh, reduced the exposure to bring that to sort of a middle gray. And that's what spot metering does. Now in spot high, what the camera's trying to do is expose that little circle or that spot uh, bright as bright as it can without overexposing it, meaning clipping it completely to white, but trying to keep it just inside of that. So again, if I move this over to the dark areas, if, you're, if you may notice that it's actually brighter than when I was doing the spot metering before. And then when I go up to the highlight area here, it's still a little bit brighter than it was when I was just doing straight up spot metering. So the idea again being just to expose it as bright as it can without clipping it completely to white. Now the next setting here is spot shadow. So again, we're looking at the center circle for the metering. And what it's doing now is actually trying to underexpose the shot in that circle to the almost to the point to where it clips to black, but not completely. So it's trying to make it as dark as possible without clipping to black. So when I go into the highlight area here, you'll notice that it got very, very dark, but you can still see it. And that's what spot shadow is supposed to do. So that's a quick summary of the five metering modes on our camera and basically how they work. But let's bring up the histogram in our live view so that we can uh, further explore the metering in our cameras. Now let me give you a quick crash course on the histogram in your live view. Basically the histogram here represents everything from black to white in terms of luminance or brightness in the image. So over here on the left side, this is completely black along this left edge. And then here, as we move over to the right, we have our shadow areas. And then over here, we get a little bit lighter to our midtones. 
And then all the way over here to the right are all our brightest tones or luminance in the scene. Now this white area is telling us how many pixels are in each sort of tone or area. So for example, we see a lot of pixels here in the shadow area, right? Which makes sense because that's probably just this OMD camera here, the grip here, this uh, mouse pad here, all this dark area. That's why there's so many pixels in the histogram in the shadows. And then there's not too many midtones, just a little bit all the way across, nice and even. And then there's a little bit of a peak here of white in the highlights. So that, that's probably represented right here with, with this uh, bright silvery area on the Olympus pen and this door behind these cameras, all this white area in here. Now I want you to notice this red line right here. This is telling us that there's some pixels or a lot of pixels that have been clipped completely to white. And that's most likely this little area right in here has been clipped completely to white. Or it might be maybe the specular right here on the dial or right in here might have been clipped completely to white. But that's what this red line represents. And then all the way over here, it may be hard to see, but there's a tiny blue dot right here at the bottom. And that's telling us that there's some pixels, not many, only a couple maybe, <laughs> have been clipped completely to black. And most likely it's probably this part right over in here has been clipped completely to black, or it might be just this little bit right here. There's no way to know by looking at the histogram. The histogram is just kind of giving you an overview of what it's seeing. And then one other thing in the histogram here, there's so much information, is this green area here, right? This green area is telling us what the exposure is in the center of the frame or the center spot, that 2% right here in the middle, which is right about here. And you'll notice that most of it is shadow. But then there's a couple of dabs, a few pixels here and there in the midtones, and then uh, a little bit right here and a little bit right here kind of peeking in. So there's just a few pixels like that. And this is only what's in the center of the frame. So to make this a little easier to see, let's just make the center of the frame one tone. I'm going to use my white balancing card here, which is actually a very, very light gray color and put this into the frame. I want you to watch what happens to the green area of the histogram. See how it's peaked? Right into the, uh, not center, but a little bit off to the right. Because right now the center of the frame is all filled with just this uh, light gray area. And that's why it's peaking now right here, the green, because that's what the green part is for, it's just measuring the center spot. But remember, we're still in matrix metering right now. So let's go into spot metering and see what happens. I'm going to leave my mouse right here where the green is. And I want you to watch what happens to the green area when I go into spot metering. See how it's moved? <laughs> it's no longer here. See, I left my mouse right here. It's now moved over to the left, and now that center spot, or the spot in the center, is now middle gray. And that's what the camera's metering system always tries to do, whether you tr choose you know, the ESP metering or center-weighted metering. Whatever it sees is trying to create a middle gray or mid-tone exactly in the middle. And that's what's happened here when we went into spot metering because we're just measuring this one tiny spot here. Now, do you remember what spot high was for? Spot high is to raise the exposure to the point to where it's as bright as it can be, but not clip, right? So let's see what happens when I move this to spot high. So I'm gonna put my mouse back into the center and we're gonna go into spot high. Now look, look how much further over this green bar is from where my mouse was. My mouse is right here. Now the green bar is all the way over here to the right. So it's brightened the exposure as bright as it can. 
However, it did give us a little bit of a buffer here. So it's not going to push it all the way that we're going to risk clipping. The idea of spot high is to raise the exposure so that it's as bright as possible without clipping. Now spot shadow is what the exact opposite to lower the exposure to the point to where it's almost black, but not clip completely to black, right? So predictably, if I move this to spot shadow, you'll notice that my mouse was here where the green bar was before. Now it's moved all the way over here, to the left, all the way into the shadow area with still a little bit of buffer, right? Ideally, whatever's in that center spot should not be clipped completely to black, although other things are. Because look at all the pixels here in the white, and then there's, there's a solid blue line here also that I can see. You might not be able to see it, but I can see it. Now let's look at how we can tie the spot metering to a single focus point in the frame to make things a little bit easier. Uh, now, if you have an EM10, you won't be able to do this. You'll have to do sort of a, a exposure lock and recompose, and I'll show you how to do that. But on the EM5s and the EM1s, you can actually tie the spot metering to a single focus point in the frame. All right, let's go into the super control panel and let's just pick a single point here. So I'm going to click info and I'm working on EM5 Mark II and I'll just pick one point in the center for now. Now you'll notice nothing has changed, right? It's still, it doesn't seem to be metering by spot, right? That's because I forgot to put it in spot metering. So we'll go in the super control panel, click spot metering, and click OK. And now, instead of the circle that we used to get, you'll see that there is now the square braces on the corners, right? Because now the spot metering is tied to the focus point. As you can see, the exposure changes drastically as I go from dark to light because I'm metering just for that one spot. Now, if you're using an EM10 Mark II, basically, if you want to, let's say, expose for this dark area like this for some reason, you can do, but you don't want to focus here, right? You can, do, you can just lock the exposure by clicking the AEL button, which is like, I think by default is FN1 on the uh, EM10. And I have a whole video on how to program the function buttons and things. But in any case, you want to do auto exposure lock here. And now when I move this around the frame, you'll notice the exposure doesn't change. So I can recompose and focus on the pen and take a picture in this, and the exposure won't change. But since we've locked on the, on the M5, since we locked the focus point together with the uh, spot metering, all I have to do is just move my focus point around like so. And now it's metering and focusing on that spot, right? Or I can go down here. If I want the shadow area, I can focus and lock on the shadow area instead. And that's all there is to it. And it works for spot high. And it works for spot low. I may not want to do spot low here, right? So I can move the spot low, or I'm sorry, spot shadow over to here. And focus and expose for that part. All right, let's look at a couple examples of how I use the spot metering. Now, these are just shots I did in the backyard today. But this is the first frame here is just basically I let the camera decide the exposure using ESP, as you can see here. And it, if you look at the histogram, everything's spread out pretty nicely. Uh, there's a lot in the shadows here, which is probably right here in this area, which is fine. But the camera did a good job all by itself, I think. Now... If I just did spot metering, let's say I wanted to expose for the sky, and I picked the spot metering here on the blue area, you can see how dark the frame got, because again, exposure in the camera is about getting things down to about a solid mid-tone or middle gray. And that's where this blue is. It's right in the middle here, as you can see, right here. Uh, now, let's look at where I did a spot highlight shot. 
And the, the spot I chose was right here where this little church steeple is. I figured this was probably the brightest part of the frame, and that's where I put my focus point and my spot metering. And you can see, look at the histogram, how much it shifted over to the right. So this is kind of an easy way to do ETTR or exposure to the right uh, without clipping your highlights, kind of in an automatic way if you want to go that route. Uh, because look at the detail here in the shadow. Pretty good, right? I can see all of the tree bark. I can make out most of the leaves going on in here. It looks good. Now this next image, I did spot shadow. And for the shadow area, I picked the same area down here in the brush and the trees so that it's crushed as dark as possible without clipping all the way to black. So I might be able to recover some detail there, but it'll probably be a little grainy. But the intent of using the spot shadow in this case is to save the highlights the best we can without crushing things all the way to black. Uh, so this is exposing to the left, so to speak, right? Uh, basically trying to save the highlights the best we can without losing the shadows. So just keep in mind that typically when you're using spot highlight or spot shadow metering, it's with the intent to post-process the images so that you can recover the shadows or recover the highlights, you know, using Capture One, Workspace, Lightroom, etc. Uh, you can use them, you know, the images straight out of camera. It's no big deal if you're doing something creative. You want to do, say, low-key photography, high-key photography, etc. But uh, generally, you know, you take those, you use those metering methods for post-processing. Well, I hope you found that helpful. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, if you like this video, I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. But either way, hopefully we'll see you again soon.